Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to talk about an update to the Dynamic LOD program today. This is really good news because I was under the impression, apparently the false impression, that this was not going to be updated anymore, that it was kind of a proof of concept and was just going to uh, sort of die. <laughs> and that's not the case, which is great news. Uh, quick note, just if you don't mind watching the whole video I'm going to be as brief as I can because I, I get a lot of questions in the comments that are answered in the videos, and if you could just take the time, it would be helpful for you uh, and for me. Um, so let's get into what the changes are for version 0.3.2. The biggest one in my eyes is this one right here. Uh, this is something that means very little to me and probably means nothing to you. This is simply a different way uh, or sort of, or a backup way of determining whether the plane is airborne or not, whether the, whether the plane is above the ground, in other words, airborne or not. Uh, several people have come to, uh, come to me with the question about uh, the program reading zero feet even when the airplane is in the air, and this should correct that. Another really big addition to this version is a remove button has been added so the, to, to remove the app. The previous version did not have that and, and quite a few people were concerned that there was no way to uninstall it. The way to uninstall it previously and if you want to un uninstall version 0.3.1 which we'll talk about in a second you can do so simply by going into the app data folder and finding the dynamic LOD folder and just deleting it and then the program is gone uh, however now we have a uninstall option which is fantastic um, there's some changes to how the installer the, the how the the program starts um, and how the auto starts are configured i personally i'll show you i just put a dynamic lod um shortcut on my desktop i much prefer to have manual control of something like this simply because if for whatever reason something goes haywire and i don't want to use the program anymore if i'm doing something specific where i don't want to use the program each time which is which is very much the case in my situation i just like having an icon that i can click and start it manually and if i don't want to use it i don't have to start it so that would be my recommendation on how to do that um, but you know to each their own as far as that goes so questions that are going to likely come up in terms of the installation of the new version this 0.3.2 you do not have to uninstall the old version 0.3.1 uh, you simply run the installer and install this version on top of the old one um, you do have to stop dynamic LOD if you've got it running before you load this new version, before you install this new version. Um, the Moby Flight module, and yeah, I closed that. So the Moby Flight module, let me get into my MSFS packages community. This one right here, okay? This is that uh, second program that you need to have running. You need to have it in your community folder in order to uh, run dynamic LOD. Um, with this new installer, you don't have to manually place it. The, if, if you don't have it, the installer will place the uh, will place this folder for you in the community folder. I would definitely recommend once you install dynamic uh, LOD 0.3.2, check your community folder, make sure you have this this Moby Flight event module in your community folder. If you don't, you can manually install it. Simply look at the uh, previous video that I did, and that shows you where to find it. Um, so that's uh, that's another uh, important thing. Um, with this version, your settings are going to be saved from the previous version, so you don't have to reconfigure everything once you install version 0.3.2. You don't have to worry about, you know, setting your AGL values again or anything like this. Um, another important note, 
do not run the installer as admin. I don't know why people insist on running stuff as admin. It makes no sense. Don't do that, please. Okay, just don't do that. Um, and I, I'm going to put the installation location of the dynamic LOD package in the description of the of the, uh, of the video, just in case you guys want to know where it is. Uh, it's wherever your app data folder is. Users, app data, roaming. And then you and then there's the dynamic LOD folder. Um, so the program closes itself when MSFS closes, so that's no big deal. Um, couple of things as well. Um, if you want to set up VR support when you when you use one of the three profile options, you can you can set three profiles. Um, if you want to set up one of the profiles as VR, you have to click the VR profile checkbox to make sure that that uh, could, because otherwise the program has no way of determining whether you're using VR or not. Um, another important one: the first dynamic, the first LOD setting with the AGL value of zero. Don't delete that because it'll mess up the program. You can change what the value is the LOD value if you want to but don't delete that first pair with the AGL zero okay um, you can add as many pairs beyond that as you want to I've seen videos of people with literally or actually not videos I saw a picture of somebody that somebody posted they literally have I don't know 25 different settings it's like every couple hundred feet it changes and they've got you know they start at like and a, a, a terrain LOD of 30, and then 70, and then 100, and then 130, and 150, 100, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they've literally got 25, if not more, values. I, I don't think that's a really good idea. Um, I've got mine set at 0, 1,500, 3,000, and 5,000. And that seems to work pretty well. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. Um, as I said in the other video, don't go from like a, a an LOD of 100 to 400. That's not that just doesn't make any sense. It's 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 too big of a transition, and you will notice that. Um, kind of the 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 lower, the less amount of a change you have, uh, versus you know how many AGL levels you have set is better so in other words don't have it go from 100 to 400 lod and don't have 25 different settings it just doesn't make any sense um otherwise the uh the use is pretty simple um i've had tremendous success with it i have you can see if you look really carefully um, in like the buildings and the, the building density in cities as you're coming in, as they change. Um, but it's, it, unless you're looking for it, in my opinion, you don't see anything. So I, I think this is really fantastic. Um, in terms of setting additional pairs of the AGL and LOD values. So the plus sign is for add. The minus sign is for remove. So if you want to add a new one, hit the plus sign and you can add a new level. Uh, if you want to remove one, just highlight it and then click the minus symbol. S is for set. That's not, if you're trying to change a setting, like if you want to change the, the LOD value for a certain AGL level from 150. As a matter of fact, why don't I just run the program real quick? Um, if you want to, this is the old version. I don't have the new version set in. But if you want to change this from you know 100 to 150 you double click it and the, now it's highlighted and if i change it to 150 i just hit s for set and then you can see it's changed to 150 there um last thing that i'll i'll mention um there is another so this is open source and there is another version of this floating around um that does some additional things. I'm going to look into that before I bring it to you guys. Hopefully this has uh, been helpful to see. And um, if you guys have any comments, questions, etc., please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments. And I hope you guys are all doing well. Talk soon.